Hi everyone, I'm getting the willies out. Ashley here from Upside Goods Company. I am coming to you today with a handful of information. Um, I see these questions asked the most and I myself have asked them as well. Um, I am a new candle maker. I have been testing and experimenting for about six months now and I'm just a few days away from my candle business launch, which is super exciting. Um, I got jazz hands about it, <laughs> but I wanted to just create a video and, and a resource for people who are just starting out. I feel like I'm really in this kind of window of novice to beginner, and I feel like a lot of the YouTube videos that are out there, they're more of interme intermediate to experienced people, and so while I'm in like the thick of this brand newness, I wanted to document what my trials and tribulations have been in regards to testing wicks. Um, testing candles, testing vessels, everything, all of the above. Um, real quick, I know that a lot of the questions are um, based around the vessels that most people use similarly. You know, there's only so many suppliers out there for candle making equipment and materials. So it's natural for us to see someone else's really successful um, candle in a beautiful photo on Facebook or Instagram and, and kind of be curious about like, oh, well, I wonder what wax and wick and FO they're using for that fragrance oil um, and how I could just duplicate that. And while I absolutely get that and done it myself, um, there really is no rhyme or reason um, around how there could be two exact candles and one could operate pretty much pretty differently than the other one. You know, maybe the temperature in your home or where it was made is different or I don't know. There's just a laundry list. Um, I literally, especially in regards to wood wicks, which is what I use, no two candles burn the same. And while that's amazing from a unique perspective and a selling point, it's also really infuriating for a type A perfectionist like myself who wants to ensure quality to every single candle that leaves my business. So there are four things that I think I've really equated to being the most important places to start. And while you can get information from other people who use similar materials, you still have to test. Like at the end of the day, that's just what it is to make your own candle. So number one is finding the right wick. There's a lot of resources and I will document them in the comments below of where you can start to get a handle on what size wick matches what size vessel. Um, this probably is no new news to you, but I found that even if I use the exact same vessel um, in the same size with multiple different scents, but the same exact wax, I'm still finding that I have to kind of toggle my wick selection. Um, some scents, which are more powerful, sometimes they need a thicker size wick or a thinner size wick. So you have to still test to find the right wick. Um, and so you can obviously get a thicker wick and you can get a wider wick. Um, and again, I'll put all of that information down below. Even if you're using a cotton wick and not a wood wick, you have to figure out what depth you're wanting within that diameter so that you can get a nice, clean, even burn. And again, some just need to be tested. Um, and there are videos out there on how to test wicks without having to make 34 different candles for 34 different size wicks. That was one of the biggest aha moments that I had was a video that I learned on YouTube of how you can do wickless testing. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but it works. All right, number two is that you need to make sure that you're working with your wax. So you have to experiment with the wax here, um, especially if you're looking at your in-between waxes. So maybe you're wanting a coconut soy or a coconut apricot, or maybe you're just wanting 100% soy with a blend. You have to test those out because let's say that you got your exact candle for one wax and it's already ready to go, ready to be shipped out, for you to switch to a different wax doesn't necessarily mean that the wick and the FO and the wax are all gonna jive together. You wanna have perfect harmony. Lovely. All right, number three is the percentage of fragrance oil. So you really have to play along with this one. So I went in with just everything at 10%, but then I found that some candles burn a lot stronger than other ones. So the ones that are lighter, I keep at 10%, and then the other ones that are just overpowering, about to give you a headache, I started to scale those down. But you would think it's not that big of a jump because if I went from 10% to 8%, because logically in my mind that makes sense, I sometimes had to settle on 9% because, you know, Goldilocks. The last thing that I wanted to share with you guys is cure time. 
When I first started making candles, I didn't even pay attention to cure time. I personally use coconut soy wax, and I learned that over time it is a softer wax, and so it really, really has to have that cure time. Um, I find that if I go anywhere less than two weeks, which is just crazy to me because what really could be a difference between seven and 14 days? I don't know. I'm not a scientist. Um, I'm probably going to ask Bill Nye because I need to understand what the difference is, but it does make a difference. That 14 day time period, it allows for that fragrance oil to really have a more prominent hot throw, which is what people are buying. You know, if you buy a candle and you're burning it and you don't smell it at all, I mean, it's pretty upsetting, quite honestly, for candle enthusiasts, I think. So, Experimenting is so, so important. And while we are using social media and all of these chats and functions and all these things that we can search, I do wanna really stress that it is vital that you experiment at home. Get the guides, get the suggestions from other candle makers, but please don't rely on just what someone says that works for them with 100% certainty that that's gonna work for you. I hope all of that made sense. Ask me any questions in the comments below. If you're liking these videos, please don't hesitate to subscribe. That would be really helpful. I really wanna document things as I go along as a new candle maker and really give you guys a voice for those starting out. I think that's the first breath that I took. Thanks guys so much. Have a great day.